You okay over there? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Twiglas2 here, back with another Rise of Nations tutorial. Today we're focusing on a hidden gem, the Infinite Q. The Infinite Q is an incredibly powerful tool that many new and returning players simply won't have heard of. But believe me when I say this will help increase your efficiency. And as we all know, there is nothing that excites strategy fans more than increased efficiency. Today I will show you what the Infinite Q is, where it is, how to use it, and most importantly, when to use it. If you enjoy this video, if you love Rise of Nations, or just like strategy games in general, please consider subscribing for regular content such as weekly live streams and strategy game tutorials. Let me start by showing you where this helpful little infinite queue actually is, as it really isn't obvious. It can be found by selecting any unit producing building. You won't see it at first as it doesn't appear until you actually start producing a unit from that building. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now I'm pretty sure when the game developers had a meeting about where to place this infinite queue button, they decided they only had one pixel spare on the screen because this is the tiniest button I have ever seen in a strategy game. So here it is. Trust me, it is there. You may have to look a bit closer. That, my friend, is the button that will activate your infinite queue. I wouldn't go as far as saying this is a feature is a secret, but making the button this small does mean a new player can be forgiven for not noticing it. So that's why I call it a hidden gem. So what does this button do, I hear you ask? Well, quite simply, once you start producing a unit, and then click on the infinite queue button, that unit will continue being produced without you having to click on it again. That building will continue to create that unit until you run out of the required resources or hit your population limit. Just be careful because if the infinite queue stops, it won't start again on its own. You'd have to go back into that building and start it again yourself. So why is this useful? If you think it through, there are often situations where you just want a building to keep churning out a particular unit without you having to divert your attention away from your economy or from a battle by going into that building and clicking on it a bunch of times to get the queue going. You'd much rather concentrate on other things, so this infinite queue lets you, in part, automate your unit creation. On top of that, there is a particularly powerful reason to use this infinite queue which I will go into in a moment, but first let's discuss the best way to use it and when to use it. In any strategy game, it's best to memorize as many hotkeys as you can to increase speed and efficiency, and the infinite queue is no exception. To activate it, the default shortcut is Q. You can change it if you want, of course, but I think Q works well. The letter Q, the word Q. I can see why they chose that one. But as I said, you can't activate the infinite queue until that building is already creating a unit. So remember to do that before hitting Q to activate the infinite queue. So now we know what it is, where it is, and the shortcut to activate it, let's discuss some particularly useful moments to use the infinite queue to improve your game. As you definitely don't want to be using it every time you want to create a unit. For me, the single most useful time to use the infinite queue is for scholars at your university, and there are a couple of good reasons for this. As soon as you hit the second age, you want to be thinking about a university and creating scholars to increase your knowledge income, but you also have a million other things to do, such as create a senate and also get your metal income up by creating a mine. So to make your life a bit easier, once your university is created, you can simply select it press V to start creating your first scholar, then immediately hit Q to activate that infinite queue. Provided you have the wealth and the population limit, your university will keep creating scholars until you have all seven, at which point it will stop because you can't have any more at one university, which is a very important point. When it comes to the university, you know it will stop when it's full, which leads us to the downside of using the infinite queue. If you don't keep an eye on it, you could potentially end up with too many of a particular unit, which could be a waste of resources and or population. But this is why the university is a great place to use the infinite queue. It will stop itself. 
For a similar reason, you could argue that Infinite Q is useful for creating fighters and bombers at your airbase. Not just because it will stop once your airbase is full, but if you're constantly going on bombing runs, you'll probably lose a few bombers, and having the Infinite Q activated, they will automatically be replaced, which can be useful if that's what you want to do. You can, of course, use the Infinite Q for citizens from your cities and any other unit, but you must be careful not to end up with too many, particularly early in the game, where it will be more difficult to recover from such an error. If you find yourself defending desperately, it can be useful to hit that infinite queue so your barracks constantly churns out military while you are looking elsewhere. Just don't forget to place a rally point for your troops to go to. Before we move on, my final specific suggestion is to use the infinite queue to create citizens as you're going into the second age. It's always useful to have a handful of free citizens to allocate to a mine as soon as you hit the second age. So that's a good possibility too, as long as you don't produce too many, as that could be a waste. I did mention earlier that there is a particularly powerful reason to use the infinite queue. I do apologise for keeping you waiting, so here it is. The best thing about this infinite queue, in my opinion, is that you only pay for each unit when that unit starts to be created. Whereas if you were to queue up, say, five units to be created by manually clicking on them, the game will make you pay for all five units immediately. Don't get me wrong, you have to pay up eventually. You're not getting a discount. But not having to pay right away helps you spread the cost over time and leaves you the option of allocating that resource elsewhere. You just need to be aware that as soon as you run out of a resource required to create that unit, the infinite queue will stop. So if you have several going at the same time, you may struggle to keep track of which ones are still going. You may have to check back in on your university occasionally if you suspect you ran out of wealth. But by keeping an eye on your wealth income, you can juggle your resources at the market to ensure there's just enough wealth in the bank by the time the next scholar is about to be started. I appreciate you have so much to think about that this may seem a step too far, but it's all part of the fun and ultimately not having to pay for every unit right away is very useful. So let's summarise what we've covered so far. The infinite queue. Where is it? You'll see it on any unit creation building, but only once you've started creating a unit. What does it do? It creates units until you run out of either resources or population. Why is that useful? Generally because it frees you up to do something else, and it only takes the resources when each unit is being created, rather than taking it all up front. What is the hotkey? It's Q. Q for Q. When are particularly useful times to use it? At your university to create scholars, definitely. At air bases to create fighters and bombers. Both university and air base because they have their own limit to the number of units that can be made. But it's also useful when defending and you know you just want a ton of units ASAP. And finally, as you're going into the second age, to ensure you have plenty of citizens to mine metal right away. Those are my suggestions if you're using this feature for the first time. So please tell me in the comments below, have you used the infinite queue before? Do you find it useful? Do you use it in the same way as I do? Or do you have some other tricks up your sleeve? Have you ever seen a button smaller than this in a strategy game? Please share your experiences so newcomers could find it easier to pick up the game and have some fun. If you found today's video useful, please leave a like, and if you'd like to see more of the same, please consider subscribing, as I'm always uploading new videos and live streaming this amazing game, along with more of my beloved RTS games. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon. Take care.